How does muscle growth work? How can I improve my results? To start with, the body has three types of muscles. These are cardiac muscles, skeletal muscles, and smooth muscles. As you may have already figured out, skeletal muscles will be the focus of this video since they are the muscles responsible for moving the bones. Did you know that the body has over 650 skeletal muscles? These muscles contract when they receive signals from motor neurons triggered by a part of the cell called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Why is this important to know? Motor neurons tell your muscles to contract, and the better you become at having these signals, the stronger you can get. This explains why a powerlifter might be able to lift heavy, but not look very muscular. On the other hand, a bodybuilder might have very big muscles, but lack strength in certain areas. This is why it's important to understand there is a difference between strength and muscle. But, even though if your goals aren't meaty thighs and bolder shoulders, you could benefit from adding lean body mass. Understanding the basics of muscle growth will help make smarter decisions and avoid wasting time at the gym. So, let's break down the process of muscle growth to improve gains. The summarized version of muscle growth is that you need to add more myosin filaments to each muscle fiber. This will make the engine of the cell bigger and stronger over time. How can we achieve this? To add myosin, a person will need to continually challenge the muscles through higher levels of resistance or weight. This process is known as muscle hypertrophy. Muscle hypertrophy occurs when the fibers of the muscles sustain damage or injury. We will call this part, hitting the gym, or lifting weights. During your workout routine, your objective will be to create an injury to your muscles. Then, the body will repair damaged fibers by fusing them, which will increase the mass and size of the muscles. Here is where nutrition, protein to be exact, comes into play. Easy right? The formula is to lift weights and eat protein. Well, there is more to this. Let's go into phase 2. How much exercise do you need? How much protein is necessary to optimize muscle growth? The science can go deep, but all you really need to know are the basics. As far as the workout side, you need three things. 1. Mechanical tension, commonly known as volume. This is the amount of weight, reps, and sets you do in the gym. The main way to improve results for muscle gains is to lift progressively heavier weights. 2. Metabolic stress. This is the burn from decreasing pH in working muscles or also known as the pump in the gym. Metabolic stress causes cell swelling around the muscle, which helps to contribute to muscle growth without necessarily increasing the size of the muscle cells. This is from the addition of muscle glycogen, which helps to swell the muscle along with connective tissue growth. 3. Muscle damage. If you've ever felt sore after a workout, you have experienced the localized muscle damage from working out. This local muscle damage causes a release of inflammatory molecules and immune system cells that activate satellite cells to jump into action. This doesn't mean that you have to feel sore in order for this to happen, but instead that the damage from the workout has to be present in your muscle cells. Then, comes the protein. Here it's important to understand two things. 1. Protein synthesis. 2. Protein breakdown. Protein synthesis is when your body activates a complex protein called MTOR during your workout. MTOR is responsible for regulating when and how much your body starts to build muscle. The thing is, we have another process called protein breakdown. This process basically does the opposite and breaks down the muscle to use it in case of shortages of protein in the body. When these two forces are balanced, you don't gain or lose muscle. If your protein balance is positive, the surplus can be directed by resistance training into muscle cells. How much protein do you need to create a positive balance? This will change from person to person but the minimum you will need to take is 1 gram of protein per lean body mass. Lean body mass is the amount of weight you have without the fat. You will probably need a smart scale or another way to obtain this number so you can make your calculations. Is that all you need to grow muscles? Well, not exactly. The final part, or the icing on the cake, is the recovery. If you do not provide your body with adequate rest, you can actually reverse the anabolic process and put your body into a catabolic state. This is where hormones come into play. You need testosterone and human growth hormone to promote protein synthesis and inhibit protein breakdown. How long does it take to build muscle? If you do everything right, you should expect to increase 1% of your body weight a month. 
This means that building muscle is a slow process. If you are weighing 150 pounds and you want to build 10 pounds of muscle, it will probably take you a minimum of 6 months to achieve your results. This is why being disciplined, constant, and persistent will play a big role. Patience is also key since results will come slowly. Start implementing these tips and start getting results, 